Welcome everyone to the Board of Trustees meeting here on May 4th, uh, 2021. And uh, I think that's Monsignor John Kaza, is that you? Yes, thank you very much for being here. We do appreciate you leading us in the invocation. We'll let you take it from here. Again, this is uh, Monsignor John Kaza from St. Therese of Lisieux at 48115 Shaner Road, right here in Shelby Township. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. Gracious loving God, we call you creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. We ask that you help us to create, create wonderful things for our community. Help us to use our gifts and talents to build a stronger community filled with people who use their talents respectively. We ask that you redeem us, protect especially our first responders, our police officers, firefighters, EMS, doctors, nurses, anyone who is in charge with protecting and keeping our community safe. And we ask that you sanctify us, bless us, help us to be, use the gifts and talents you've given us to make our community safe, strong, healthy. And we ask that you continue to use us as you will, that in order to make Shelby Township and its environs a wonderful place to grow, to live, to love, and to serve. And we ask all this in God's gracious name. Amen. Could we please stand for the pledge? And Monsignor Kaza, could you please lead us in a pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the United States for which it stands. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty. with liberty and justice for all. Well, Senior Casa, thank you very, very much again from St. Teresa of Lisieux. It's 48115 okay. Chainer Road. Thank you so much. We You're pray. welcome. I have to go to another meeting, so I'll, I'll excuse myself. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, today we're going to start this meeting, I think, with a very special guest, if she's here. Uh, Ms. Sophie Berry, are you with us? If she is, this would be phone number ending in 706. Otherwise, I don't see any other names that could be that person. Well, if you are 100 years old, you can come on right now, because that's how old she is. Sophia Berry is celebrating her 100th birthday. And if she's a little late, you can be late when you're 100 years old. No. So phone number ending in 706. If this is you, Sophia, you would have to press star six to unmute yourself. Star six to unmute yourself, please. Okay, well, when she does come on, please let us know and we'll stop what we're doing anytime during a meeting. We really do want to recognize her 100th birthday. Okay, very, very special. Um, also, today is International Firefighters Day. It's uh, Teachers Recognition Day. And Mr. Grote, I understand you have a proclamation. I'm going to let you tee that up. You're muted, Mr. Grote. Mr. Supervisor, I think we should maybe take a roll call first uh, and then go to uh, official business. Okay, we can do that, and that way it'll be part of the agenda. Roll call, please. Thank you. Yeah. Before we do that, before we do that, I have one more announcement, and it will go on a roll call. Um, I want everybody to know that Mr. Dave Miller is sending out a letter. This letter has to do with a um, how we're actually uh, fighting uh, GLWA on these mandates. Uh, Shelby Township is responding to G uh, Detroit Water, we used to call it. Now they call themselves Great Lakes Water Authority. But uh, we're responding to their mandate. And I know we've done a lot of talking about this, um, but the mandate is adopting uh, irrigation ordinance, authorizing water storage facility is what we did um, a couple of weeks ago. So we're trying to stabilize water rates and we're sending a letter out. Dave Miller, director of DPW is sending a letter out. It should be arriving to you sometime next week explaining everything about not only what this water mandate is about, although it's been in the paper, but it also explains why we're doing it and what we're doing about it. Again, uh, we are building a new 3.5 million gallon water tank to, uh, that will be completed sometime next year. And I want everybody to be rest assured that this will be paid for, paid in cash, no increase in taxes, no debt, no bonding, 
And uh, again, it'll be done next year. And we will still remain Macomb County's lowest cost full service community. So this letter is coming to you sometime next week. You will receive it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to call Mr. Dave Miller at DPW or any one of us. Thank you very much. Now on that note, Mr. Grove, can you please take roll call? Uh, Mr. Supervisor, if I can make a quick uh, addition to what you just announced. Yes. Uh, no matter how you, uh, 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 what, what, what the name is and, and how you cut it, it's, it's still Detroit operation. Detroit, uh, Detroit controls the process of the water distribution. They, uh, they came up with this fancy name, Great Lakes Water Authority. Macomb County has one representative on that board. Oakland County has one. The rest of it is Wayne County and Oakland County, and they have a monopoly on that. So we, we need to make this loud and clear that we, we do have a voice at the table, but we don't control the process. It's, it's control, it's still controlled by Detroit and Wayne County. So just let's make this very clear so our, our, our residents know what's going on here. Jim Carabelli. Present remotely, Shelby Township, Michigan. Lisa Casali. Here, Shelby Township, Michigan. Lucia DeSico. Here, Shelby Township, Michigan. Stanley Grott uh, is present in Shelby Township uh, remotely. Uh, Rick Stavakas. Here in Shelby Township remotely. John Vermeulen. Here, Shelby Township. And Vince Viviano. Here, remotely Shelby Township. So we do have a quorum, Mr. Supervisor. Okay, great, thank you very much. And I'm gonna let you uh, start with that proclamation if that's okay. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask uh, uh, Laura White, who is uh, my assistant at uh, clerk's office to, to read it. It's, uh, uh, it shouldn't take longer than three to five minutes. And uh, Laura, are you online? Yes, I am. Can you please uh, read the proclamation for us? Okay, whereas our township is committed to recognizing that our growth and strength depends on the safety and economic value of homes, buildings and infrastructure that serves our citizens, both in everyday life and in times of disaster. And whereas our confidence in the resilience of these buildings that make up our community is achieved through the devotion of diligent guardians, building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, trades, per, trades people, design professionals, laborers, plumbers, and others in the construction industry who work year round to ensure the safety construction of buildings and whereas these guardians are dedicated members of the International Code Council, a nonprofit that brings together local, state, and federal officials that are experts in the built environment to create and implement the highest quality code, codes to protect us in buildings where we live, learn, play, and do business. And whereas our nation benefits economically and techno technology, excuse me, sorry, I'm having trouble with that, technologically from using the international codes that are developed by a national voluntary consensus codes and standards developing organization, our government is able to avoid the high cost and complexity of developing and maintaining these codes, which are the most widely adopted building safety and fire prevention codes in the world. And whereas these modern building codes include safeguards to protect the public from hazards such as hurricanes, snowstorms, tornadoes, wildland fires, floods, and earthquakes. And whereas Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role of our community's largely unknown protectors of public safety, our local code officials who assure us safe, sustainable, energy efficient, and livable buildings that are essential to America's prosperity. And whereas Prevent, Prepare, Protect, Building Codes Save, the theme for the Building Safety Month 2021 encourages all Americans to raise awareness about the importance of safe and resilient construction, fire prevention, disaster mitigation, energy conservation, water safety, training the next generation in new technologies in the construction industry. And whereas each year in observance of the Building Safety Month, people all over the world are asked to consider the commitment to improve building safety, resilience, and economic investment at home 
and in the community and to acknowledge the essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus and federal agencies in protecting lives and property. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Shelby, Macomb County, Michigan, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2021 as Building Safety Month in the Charter Township of Shelby. Further, we encourage our citizens to join with their communities in participating in Building Safety Month activities. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And I just want to say, Tim Wood, are you on right now? Tim Wood is our director. There he is, um, department head of the building department. We just want to recognize you and thank you for the all the effort of not only you, but all the people that support your department. And uh, we appreciate all your efforts. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank and we you also know like to... you don't have a very popular position, but you do a good job. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to take a second to invite any uh, property owners or residents out there. Uh, if you have a project that uh, you're contemplating and you'd like to come to visit us, we'd be glad to uh, help you through uh, the process and talk about your project. Thank Tim you. Tim Wood is here and he's here to help you. So give him a call. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, who, um, Mr. Grote, Thank you for that proclamation. Uh, thank you for recognizing uh, a building safety um, a month. And is there anything you want to add? No, it's uh, it's a special recognition for our hardworking employees. And uh, and uh, 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 Tim Wood is is a head of that department. He's got wonderful employees, and uh, they they just do an outstanding uh, work for uh, for our residents. Uh, so uh, just thank you very much, and keep keep up the good work. Okay, so on that note, Mr. Grote, could you please, uh, well, no, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda that has been presented? Uh, yes, Mr. Supervisor. Okay. Minutes, board meeting, board, uh, board meeting, April 20, 2021. Move to approve minutes as presented. Uh, Item B, election worker wage scale, move to concur with the recommendation of Clerk Shelby, Shelby Township Clerk Stanley Growth, and approve the revised election worker wage scale for the Charter Township of Shelby as presented. Interdepartmental vehicle transfer, building department, move to concur with the recommendation of building director Tim Wood and authorize the transfer of retired 2018 Ford Interceptor vehicle from police department to the building department at the cost of 6,500. Funds to be taken from general fund item line item 101-900-999-207 and amend the budget accordingly. Uh, bill run in the amount of $1,028,558.61. Uh, Mr. Supervisor moved to approve the bill run in that amount and also moved to approve consent agenda as presented. Support. Motion made by Mr. Grote, supported by Mr. Carabelli. Roll call vote, please. Stanley Grote, yes. Uh, Jim Carabelli. Aye. Lisa Casali. Yes. Lucia DeSico. Yes. Rick Staphicus. Yes. John Vermeulen. Yes. And Vince Viviano. Yes. Motion carries, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you very much. And Nick, if you could put up the slide for the agenda, we'll go through that right now. So we have six items on the agenda. Here we go. The first one is an introduction for conditional rezoning petition 01-21 and site plan number 2101, Tony Gallo, uh, the Oaks. Uh, no, item number two, the adoption of conditional rezoning number 04-20 and preliminary PUD site plan number 20-19. Um, this would be the Altair Active Adult Living Community. Um, number three, the third item is a purchase replacement of ambulances. I believe there are two of them. 
The fourth item is the extended warranty and preventive maintenance contract for the cardiac monitors and CPR devices. Item number five, the sidewalk maintenance services. That's a revised contract modification. Tim Wood is here to explain that. And finally, the last item is ordinance 293. Uh, it's an ordinance amendment, which we'll go into a little more detail later. So do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Mr. Supervisor, if I may, um, we uh, we got so excited about this proclamation, we didn't make a motion and supported to adopt the, the, the proclamations that it was read. So maybe let's let's deal with that item first. Okay, that'll be item number 1A. How's that? Very good. So uh, I, uh, I move to approve the uh, regular agenda as presented. Thank you. Support. Motion made by Mr. Groat, seconded by Mrs. Casali. Roll call, please. Uh, Stanley Groat, yes. Uh, Lisa Casali? Yes. Uh, Lucia DeSico? Yes. Rick Staphicus? Yes. John Vermeulen? Yes. Vince Viviano? Yes. And Jim Caraballi? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, very good, thank you. Mr. Chair, I'll, if I may step in just for a moment, there are a few people in our audience that could be here for that 100 year old birthday celebration if we could just see if they're the right ones. Uh, I've got two phone numbers, one ending in 066, the other ending in 706, and one person just logged in as K. I'm gonna give everybody the opportunity to speak. If you're on the phone, please press star six to unmute yourself. Are any one or either of, of the three numbers or names I listed? Is anybody here for this 100 year old celebration for Sophia Berry? Okay, that's okay. When you're 100 years old, you can be late and we have no complaints. That's fine. Maybe she'll be here eventually, and that's a great thing. So, um, residents, yes, as Nick just um, said, this is the opportunity for you to address the board. Now, this is regarding any items on our agenda that I just went through, any of the six items. Your comments pursuant to board policy are limited to three minutes. Please keep in mind that while the scope of your discussion at this point of the meeting should be limited to agenda items only, you will also have an opportunity at the end of this meeting to discuss a wider range of topics that relate to township business. So who would like to go first? Residents and or guests, the way to let us know you'd like to speak is by raising your virtual hand. If you are on the phone, the way to do that is press star nine. That raises your hand. And once called on, you'll press star six to unmute yourself. If you're on a phone, tablets, or computer, just simply press that raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. Mr. Chair, we're going to start with the phone caller. That number is 706. Again, star six to unmute yourself, please. Hello. Hello, if you could say your name and where you're from. Welcome. Hello, can you hear us? Again, caller star six to unmute yourself, please. Phone number ending in 706. There we go. There Hello. we go. Say your name. Hi. And where you're from. Good evening. My name is Pam Ulrich. I'm from 6026 Fordham Drive. I'm calling to oppose the Altier apartments that are going in at 25 and bound. <clears throat> I know during the last meeting that you guys talked about being bringing the buildings down to two stories. And as of what I can see, only one building has been brought down to that story. I'm also against putting in 670 square foot apartments, which would take up 40% of the capacity of that place. It's not consistent with the plans and surrounding area. And your road study done during COVID is absolutely laughable. I have spoken to several people through the community and the county and the state that agree with us. This increase in traffic will affect emergency services during rush hour and most certainly during school hours. Several of you board members live within a mile of this development. And why you are not protecting your own neighborhood and the people that voted for you you are devaluing our properties and these will negative effect, negatively affect the developments if they continue. You also brought up the guarantees of riffraff not moving in when you can't be rented to 70 plus year old people. This is a very busy school zone. 
I know we have complete, you know, continue to complain and complain and complain. You know, I have thought about maybe doing a recall, but at this point, I know the election is in three years. So hold on to your seats, guys. Michael Flynn and Lynn Wilhelm no longer sit there because of what I did. Their misdeeds were exposed and people paid attention and they voted them out. I will continue with this. You will all be voted out. As I've said before, what happens in darkness shall come to light. Many residents agree to opposing us, and I hope you agree with them. Okay, well, thank you very much for um, coming in. We do appreciate your viewpoint. Is there somebody else that would like to speak? Yes, Michael Johnson. Good evening, my name is Michael Johnson and I live at 54534 Horizon Drive. And I wanted to comment tonight about the uh, meeting that happened on April 20th. As a teacher, I always encourage my students when we're talking about government to attend the township meetings um, or the city meetings in which where they live. However, at the last meeting, I was quite embarrassed and, and really disappointed in how many of the trustees conducted themselves. I listened as a developer, Mr. Ruggiero disrespected one of our trustees, Mr. Vermeulen and a resident, and not one tr trustee could stand up and say anything about it. They let this developer continue to do that, and I thought it was very disrespectful. And it proved to be a conversation when I talked to my students the next day of what not to do, especially in the times we are in right now. The fact that nobody said anything, and, and Mr. Supervisor, you did say something at the end, but only after somebody commented. I wish that more people would have spoke up. I think that we should do better because we know better. And I encourage you to do better in the future. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And I especially appreciate that feedback, but I do want everybody to know that that really is on me, not the other six members of the board. I was the one conducting the meeting and I agree with everything you just said. Again, even though I apologized two weeks ago, I want to apologize to you and your students, if they were listening, and to anyone who was um, uh, disrespected. Um, by the way, I did call uh, that resident. I did apologize to her. And uh, there was another gentleman I apologized to as well. He called me and uh, we had a, a good conversation. So I will work harder. And um, that was an oversight on my part. And I, I am gonna try harder and I'm not gonna let that happen. And I know that uh, uh, people like you will, will help me and support me. So thank you for that reminder. Um, and that's very supportive, thanks. Okay, who would like to go next? Mr. Supervisor, I just put something up on everyone's screen that you can see that there are no additional speakers listed. You okay, I will close. Uh, nobody has speaking. their hand up. Thank you, Nick. I will close public speaking at this point since no one is there and we'll uh, go ahead and continue. But our first agenda item, as Mr. Grove pointed out, will be um, the making a motion of the proclamation for uh, Building Recognition Day. So who would like to make that motion? So move, so move, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, the motion would be to approve the proclamation which you read. Any, who would right. like to move? Support. Who was that? Mr. Viv no. Viviano. Motion made by Mr. Grote, seconded by Mr. Viviano. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Stanley Grote, yes. Uh, Vince Viviano. Yes. Jim Caravelli. Aye. Lisa Casali. Yes. Lucia De Sico. Yes. Rick Staphicus. Yes. And John Vermeulen. Yes. Motion carries, Mr. Supervisor. Okay. We'll go ahead and start with item number one, the introduction of the conditional rezoning petition 01-21. And Ms. Missage, our planning director is here. So I'll let you go ahead and tee it up and explain what's going on with our first agenda item. Ms. Great, Ms. thank you, Supervisor. Good evening, board members. Um, this is for a conditional rezoning request um, consisting of two parcels with a combined area of 27.43 acres located on the north side of 25 mile east, east of Van Dyke um, along um, the M53 freeway there. Um, the petitioner is requesting 
um, a rezoning from R1B, which is single family residential to R1C, which is also single family residential. And along with this um, rezoning request comes a development of 46 site um, condo units. And um, the property has uh, the Lawson drain that crosses it along the east portion um, and also bisects the property diagonally with the DTE um, utility corridor in, like I said, M53 to the east um, of this property. The surrounding properties um, to the north are R1B. The properties, the developments on the south side of 25 Mile, which consists of Black Hills, is zoned R1C. And also the development that is just west of Black Hills um, is a consent agenda item. And uh, that one also um, is the R1C zoning requirements for the residential lots. Um, so this proposal is uh, consistent with our master plan. Um, it is set for moderate density and low density. And the difference between R1B and R1C is, is lot um, width and area um, and, and setback requirements. So um, with that being said, Mr. Supervisor, there's minor um, you know, uh, deviations from those two districts. Um, but in general, the entire plan um, is consistent with the area. At, at the February 22nd Planning Commission meeting, this item was postponed at that time due to some questions that needed to be addressed on the site plans. And um, it came back to the Planning Commission on April 12th, where it was approved by the Planning Commission. Okay, discussion. Any questions? Who would like to make a motion? Uh, motion, please, someone. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Vermeulen. Make the motion to concur with the recommendations of the Planning Commission and approve or introduce conditional rezoning application 1-21 and proceed with the final site plan application 21 for Tony Gallo, 25 mile LLC, based on the following. The change in is consistent with the development pattern in the area. The change in zoning will provide more uniform and consistent development pattern the rezoning will provide housing opportunities that accommodate the needs of the residents at all stages of life. The change in zoning will not adversely impact any abutting development. The site is significantly encumbered by natural characteristics as the ITC corridor and the alleviation of the current zoning change would be appropriate. The proposed condominium plan has merit and the ability to meet R1C zoning school zoning district standards in compliant with the lot averaging ordinance in the township zoning ordinance. Support. Motion made by Mr. Remulan, seconded by Mr. Viviano. Any discussion once again? Yes. I, I'd like to uh, congratulate Mr. Gallo. He's building some very large square foot units in that area. It's bordered by uh, the highway. It's not too far off in 25 mile road. Mr. Gallo, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, roll call vote, please. John Vermeulen. Yes. Vince Viviano. Yes. Jim Caraballi. Aye. Lisa Casali. Yes. Lucia DeSico. Yes. Stanley Grunt. Yes. Rick Staphicus. Yes. Motion carries, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you. By the way, is uh, Sophia or Sophie Berry on yet? Not that I can see, Mr. Chair. Okay. She can come in anytime she wants. Go ahead. Uh, next item, Ms. Message. Okay. Um... This next item is uh, the 25 mile in Mound Road um, development project. And this also is a conditional rezoning along with the PUD plan. Um, at your last meeting, it was introduced and approved. Um, at this time, this is for the adoption of the rezoning only. Um, the applicant will have to come back with final PUD plans. I know that there was some questions 
um, about the plans not being updated or revised. So at this time, um, like I said, it, it is just for the rezoning, for the adoption of the rezoning, and um, the PUD will come in for a final with the revised plans as the board stipulated at their last meeting. And it, in, in, that, in that final PUD will also be heard at the board level. And this, is, this was for um, the property, like I said, at the northwest corner of 25 Mile and Mound. And the applicant is requesting a rezoning from R1B, which is single family residential and O1 to R12 uh, multiple family um, for that property where a majority of the property, over 60% of that property is already zoned multiple family. Okay, okay. I'll take a motion. Kind of quiet tonight. Would somebody like to make a motion? Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Casale. Yes. I move to concur with the recommendation of the Planning Commission to adopt and publish an amendment to the zoning ordinance number 212.123 to rezone parcels number 23-07-05-478-006, number 23-07-05-478-007, and 23-07-05-478-010, located at the northwest corner of 25 Mile Road and Mound, to be rezoned from R1B, One Family Residential and O1 Professional Office, to R12 Multifamily Residential based on the following. The proposed rezoning and planned unit development is consistent with the majority of the current zoning of the property. Number two, the planned unit development meets all the criteria in the zoning ordinance and conforms to the R12 multifamily ordinance requirements. The change is not out of scale with the existing development pattern in this area of the township. Number four, the change in zoning would provide a more uniform and consistent development pattern. Number five, the submission of a conditional rezoning along with the PUD site plan assures the township that the proposed development will not exceed the density as proposed on the PUD site plan. Number six, the conditional site plan encourages useful open space and recreational areas and in innovation and land use based on the design and layout of the site. Or Motion made by Mrs. Casale, seconded by Mr. Viviano. Any discussions? Yes. Mr. Viviano. I have questions for Mr. Ruggieri concerning this. The reason, the reason why we're being asked for the double density here is for the senior housing. There's a number of questions that I have that should be asked. And I'm hoping that Mr. Ruggieri is prepared to answer those questions. Okay, go ahead. First of all, I'd like to know how many automatic defibrillators there are since we're dealing with old people in, in a senior housing designation. Secondly, I'd like to know how many handicapped spark parking spaces we're gonna have out of this and how many are double with in case we have people with scooters. I'd like to know how many, what type of fire suppression systems that we have and what type of smoke alarms that we have in case there's an issue with a fire, especially if somebody's hearing challenged as people often that age are. I'd like to know if there's any exercise rooms. I didn't see anything marked as that. Um, I, I want to know also if there's going to be any home you know, apartment owners association as a part of this to make sure that residents have some say in the way this property is being managed. And I also have a question for Mr. Hughes. Mr. Okay, Hughes before you answer, Mr. Ruggieri, um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the handicap parking, the fire suppression, well, the, the handicap parking, I think, would be handled by our building department. That would be code. Is that correct, Mr. Wood? Yes. Okay. And then the fire suppression and the smoke alarms would be handled by the fire department. Uh, Chief Pierce, I see we have you on, on here. Would that be a code handled by you or Mr. Wood or both? I believe it's a combination of both, sir. Okay. That's I think the other questions, if I could so um, uh, just be excused for one more minute, would be uh, questions about the exercise equipment and the association. Uh, Mr. Rager, you want to answer those questions? Uh, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Phil Ruggieri, 
on behalf of the petitioner and uh, as a principal. Uh, we have an exercise uh, program designed with the exterior trail system. We've, we have submitted in our previous presentation the uh, six different apparatuses that are available. And um, we, we provided that and hopefully that'll connect into the major trail system that Shelby Township has been expanding on. As far as an association, um, this is not an association. This is an independent living facility, 55 and up. It'll be professionally managed. We'll monitor the entire operation of that site. And uh, this is one of our, this is our ownership. This is not something we were spinning off to some third party. So we're actively involved in the uh, monitoring of this facility. And uh, the last item being defibrillators. Uh, you know, this is not a assisted living or a, um, uh, a memory loss facility. This is an independent active adult community. So the need for them will be minimal. However, we will most likely provide something along that nature, but we're way ahead of ourselves. So right now we're just dealing with uh, the, the concept plan and the construction. That is something that's internal uh, that we will monitor. We're also looking at uh, pendulums and, and wristbands to use for those that are aged uh, significantly that might need that. But bear in mind that this is definitely a 55 and up with the average age, probably close to 70. But those are very active uh, individuals. So we don't anticipate scooters and things of that nature uh, because this is an active adult community. And we're also keeping the cost down significantly. Uh, and plus with COVID, we don't want to have these contained rooms for exercise equipment and so on. We, we think it's best to keep things outside and to minimize the uh, cost and maintenance uh, for the facility. Thank you. Okay, oh, thank you, Mr. Rager. Mr. Uh, Vermeule, I'll try yeah, to ask Mr. Hughes, Mr. Hughes and Ms. Mysek a question. Ms. Mysek, were, were any occupancy studies done in terms of the existing facilities that we have that are similar to this proposed item? In other words, uh, how many people we have? Is it at capacity or what? Did Mr. Ruggeri submit anything like that? Uh, no, that's not part of the requirement, Mr. Vermeulen, for the submission packet. Okay. So we're recommending, if I, if I understand it, this planning commission is recommending senior status, which doubles the density, which enables the 670 square foot apartments for seniors. Now, Mr. Hughes, I have a question for you. Uh, earlier today, I spoke with an attorney and he is an attorney of considerable reputation. It's my understanding from speaking with this individual and others that if Mr. Ruggeri cannot find enough people to fill his development, his apartments, he can legally run out to anybody no matter what he's forecast after a certain number of days. Is that correct? Well, it's um, partially maybe the case, Mr. Vermeule, and I would say that uh, the advice you got was for, uh, leveled at if Mr. Ruggeri has a 55 and older development, he borrows from the bank and premises his loan on that and runs into issues later, uh, he may have an excuse under law uh, to allow for people to be tenants under 55 years and older under and still be okay with the covenant with the bank. Uh, that I won't say that the township would let that go though. We would be aggressive. Uh, the township would to try to enforce and maintain uh, the covenant that's permitting this uh, approval if it goes that way of 55 and over. Uh, the township has in the past with respect to one other project I can think of uh, been aggressive when it learned that there was uh, tenants under 55 years old and pursued uh, that owner to either get a variance or cease to practice. So uh, I'm not willing to say that the township would throw up its hands if we learn that there are tenants in here under 55 years old. I agree with the uh, reputable lawyer that the bank may uh, look the other way though. Now, would you also say that, that, you know, what about a deed restriction on this? And what, what would be the penalty? What would be the penalty? I mean, this is unsworn testimony on the part of the builder. Can, market conditions can change, you know, the dying off baby boomers, people take out 30 year mortgages. You know, it may make the area less attractive for the residents already purchased a home and drop the value. 
Well, well, the penalty is that if he violates something that is a condition that permits uh, this to go forward. So he says, I will rent to 55 and over, and it turns out he is not. Uh, the penalty is that we'd be entitled to injunctive relief from the circuit court here in Macomb County uh, to get an order uh, prohibiting uh, leases to those that are under 55 years old. Um, and it and often is the case that the judges that hear these things uh, recognize uh, that a municipality has uh, accepted some promises to permit something. So they tend to uh, uphold those promises. So I would say again, uh, Mr. Ruggieri should be on notice that if he's gonna violate what he says he's gonna do, the township should respond swiftly and seek injunctive relief. That's the real issue here is the density. The double density that comes with the senior housing that's basically not very enforceable. Well, are you asking if you're asking me uh, uh, that question? Uh, the, the reality is that there's even without the board taking action with respect to a PUD, uh, there's other avenues that the developers can use to double the density by way of uh, approval for 55 and plus living. Um, and it wouldn't be by way of PUD, but through our planning commission, special land use and such. Um, we have to keep in mind that the state and federal guidelines treat 55 plus as meaning you have 80% of your occupants are over 55 years old. Uh, Shelby Township has never been that lenient. We have not adopted that standard. Our standard is if you say you're 55 plus, that means 100% of your people must be 55 and plus. So Mr. Ruggieri's on note here. He should take notice. That's our view of what 55 and plus means. What about a deed restriction? Um, well, a deed restriction is a contract that you, uh, indicates that a property owner will not uh, endeavor to do something. Um, and while it's, it's effective, uh, it's no more effective than what this board would do. You're in step two, step three is planning commission, step four, if the board moves again, will be back to the board and the action the board takes will have the same effect uh, as a deed restriction. Uh, we finalize those documents and we make sure they're recorded with the property. So it is re always in place. And one of those conditions, I guarantee you, uh, if the board proves it would be that uh, tenants must be 55 years old, at least. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanna add one more thing too. Um, many of you know, we used to own Shelby Manor Senior Apartments. Those are 55 plus as well. And for the 12, 13 years I've been here, they have always been completely full. There's never been a problem. And by the way, those apartments are 700 square feet. Now, Mr. Ruggieri's, I believe, are 670. So the Shelby Manor senior apartments are 700. So they're roughly the same size, and they're going for a little more than $1,000 a month. So the occupancy has been uh, at 100%. In fact, uh, I know in the last six or seven years that uh, we were managing the apartments, we always had a waiting list. And the reason we got rid of them is because we just didn't think this was a business that we needed to be in. Um, and I didn't think we were making any money because by the time you took all the fixed costs and uh, variable costs and looked at the bottom line, um, it was pretty much break even. So we weren't losing money. And of course we took all that money when we sold the apartments, we took much of that money to pay off our OPEB costs and some pension funding as well. So I think um, if you wanna look at some history, I think the Shelby Manor Senior Apartments, even though there's 265 of those and only 96 of these, they're very similar. Uh, well, Mr. Ruggieri may not like that statement because these are newer and I know that the luxury um, is quite um, you know, higher on a scale. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, they are about the same square footage and they have been um, occupied at 100% plus. Any other comments? Hello, Chris. I have a comment. Yeah, Mr. Viviano. So the current zoning before being changed was 80 apartments, correct? It was, it was 80 apartments. 
No, they are proposing 108 and then- uh, No, the I, I know that. What was it prior to us changing the zoning? It was zoned for a certain amount office, certain amount uh, residential lots. Yeah, just you have those numbers right here. R1B was uh, about two acres. Two acres. Office was 1.8 acres at about 17%. And R12 was about uh, the apartments, 6.63 acres or about 64%. And that's the way it's been for about 25 years. Right. And all these apartments are not 600 some square feet, correct? That's correct. They range from 670 and up to over 1,000 square feet, Mr. Viviano. Okay. Oh, well then I, I take that back. These apartments, and then I guess would be larger than a Shelby Manor senior apartments. Larger, yeah. Majority, yes. Okay, so you know, in looking at this proposal, we're looking at two options for development of this property, and only two options. Option one is a minimum of 80 apartments, and also three homes on a lot plotted for one home with a large yard, um, and a busy commercial office at intersection that's already stressed. So this option gives the township no oversight, no control how these properties are developed, and no control how they're built out. Again, this is option one. This means we have no control over the building height. They can all be three stories high. That's right. We In the 80 no, apartments, they could be three stories. That's right. They can all be three stories. All. We have right. no control over the number of trees planted or the type of tenant that's allowed or to rent or anything if this goes through as option one. Now, if you look at option two, and by the way, when I say 80 apartments, I don't mean 80, I mean a minimum of 80. It could be more. And Mr. Group, rentable to any age group. Pardon? Yeah, oh yeah, any age, any age group. That's right. Now option two features 96 apartments with a hard cap at 96 units because we have a legal agreement with the developer if this passes that says as much. There's no office but there is a park with walking trails in place under option two um, and three homes sandwiched into one lot under option, under option one. Um, but under option two, it's all 96 units and that's it. In addition, we negotiated to ensure that the building closest to the adjacent residential properties is no taller than two stories. So the lady that was on before said that it used to be two stories for all of them. No, no, no. It used to be three stories for all of them. That's and this right. board negotiated that one building closest to the adjacent residential properties, no taller than two stories. In option one, all the apartment buildings I wanna stress are all three stories high. Now, option two also includes, because of the board requesting it, a gated brick uh, facade along mound and 25 mile roads. Also two nature ponds with a minimum of three fountains and also a tree every 20 feet instead of every 40 feet. And because this is a PUD, our township retains control to make sure that this all gets done. Unlike option one, where we have no control. Now remember, as I had said, reading the numbers, 64% of this property has been zoned for apartments for more than 25 years. And there's nothing that this board can do to change that in option one or two, but in option one, by allowing the development to include two acres of adjoining R1 zoning, we ensure a more consistent and feasible develop, development for this corner with more trees, more green space, and less traffic. So this board must consider these two options with tonight's vote again, and we can vote for option one with a minimum of 80 units, a busy office, three homes, and trust that the developer will maintain the township's aesthetic with no agreement and no oversight to hold them accountable, none. Or we can vote for option two, 96 senior apartments with more trees, more green space, and most critically, in my opinion, a contract with a developer that he must maintain these high standards in building the property and managing, managing the facility. So in closing, my vote is gonna be again for option two, 
which includes more trees, more green space, and most importantly, more control. Um, in other words, under option two, unlike option one, we don't have to trust anyone. Under option two, all we need to do is verify. Trust no one up under option two, all we need to do is verify. Under option one, it's all trust with no verification. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Vimulin. You, you brought up about uh, Shelby Manor in the south part of the township. Uh, you know, I think it's it's not a, exactly a fair comparison because Shelby Manor was, was a high rise unit. Not only was it a high rise, but it was for low income housing. I don't think that's appropriate in this area. I would call uh, $1,100 a month, 700 square feet, um, low, low income housing, but it's, I guess everyone is, you know, you can call it what you want. Um, I, I, I know many of these people and um, I, I would not put them in that category. Um, but obviously you're, you know, free to express your opinion. Anyone else? Okay, let's go ahead and vote. Roll call vote, please. Lisa Casali. Yes. Vince Viviano. Yes. Jim Caraballi. Nay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Can you say that again, Mr. Caraballi? No. Okay. No. Uh, Lucia DeSico. Yes. Stanley Grot, yes. Rick Staphicus. Yes. And John Remulin. No. Okay. Motion, car motion carries, Mr. Supervisor. Okay, Ms. Misich, thank you. Uh, I want to also thank the Planning Commission and Mr. Grote, I know you're on that Planning Commission. From where this thing was uh, many months ago to where it is today is night and day. Um, you know, it was over 108 units and nothing. Uh, the, the Planning Commission worked very hard. And I know this board worked very hard in negotiating this too. So uh, it's a team effort. And again, I want to stress that uh, nobody's happy with, uh, you know, apartments. We made the very best that we could and uh, made it look as good as we could. So thank you very much, everybody, for the team effort. Thank you. We'll move on to item number three now. Our fire chief, Franklin Pierce, has asked us to consider the recommendation on this next item. He's suggesting that the township replace two ambulances that are requiring a great deal of maintenance in our at the end of their service life for the township needs. Board, you may recall that we budgeted for the purchase of two ambulances. Chief Pierce has indicated that the costs have increased for reasons that are related to health and safety of our firefighters and of course our patients. And uh, by requiring these extra features uh, for ambulances, uh, they will be much safer. So the chief did put this matter out for bid and he is recommending that the township move forward with the lowest bid presented to the fire department. Um, Frank, uh, Chief Frank uh, Pierce, do you have anything to add to that? No, this, these will be the, well, sorry. These will be the last two ambulances in the fleet. All the other ambulances we have are brawn ambulances. Moving forward, we'll be able to save, um, reuse the boxes. They're all aluminum. They can take them off and re-chassis, which will be a significant cost that the board decided uh, quite a few years back to continue with. So these are the last two new, and then we'll start refurbishing with the boxes. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions or comments for uh, Chief Pierce? Uh, Chief Pierce, keep up the good work. We appreciate everything you're doing over there. Well, thank you. It was a big team effort. Jeff Chestnut and Jeremy Chestnut put a lot of work into this, two of our firefighters, along with our battalion chief, Scott McLeod. So I couldn't have done it without them for sure. I just want to say too, you know, we do look at the numbers quite frequently and uh, your three year trend looks very good. So thank you for managing costs. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, who would like to make a motion? Uh, yes, Mr. Supervisor. Mr. Viviano. Yes, I'd like to concur with the recommendation of Fire Chief Frank Pierce and approve the purchase of two emergency rescue ambulances, Ron Chief XL Type 1, on a 2022 F450 gasoline 4x4 chassis to be delivered in 2022 from Kodiak Emergency Vehicles for $544,956, plus the additional cost for graphics, radio installation, 
fire COM system, laptop mounting hardware, computer modem, and installation and estimated cost of 20,000. For a total cost of $564,956, funds are to be taken from the capital improvement fund line item 427-340-9800. Support. Motion made by Mr. Riviano, supported by Mrs. Casale. Any questions, comments? Okay. Um, roll call. Roll, please. Vince Riviano. Yes. Lisa, Lisa Casale. Yes. Lucia DiCicco. Yes. Stanley Grot. Yes. Rick Staphicus. Yes. John Vermeulen. Yes. Jim Caravelli. Aye. Okay, motion carries, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you, Mr. Grote. Next item is the extended warranty and preventive maintenance contract for the cardiac monitors and CPR devices. Fire Chief uh, Pierce has asked us to consider this next item. He's seeking board concurrence with his recommendation to purchase an extended warranty and preventive maintenance contract with an entity that services our cardiac monitors as well as our CPR devices. Chief Pierce indicates that this contract will provide for preventive maintenance coverage for accidental damage, uh, battery replacement, and a number of other services. And Chief, as I understand it, uh, this contract would be approximately $84,000 and is paid in yearly installments for the next seven years. Do I have that right? Yes, that is correct. Anything to add to that? No, I just think that it's necessary to do, if one of these goes down, we have a 24 hour turnaround on a loaner to uh, make sure that it's available for our firefighters to use to go out and help our uh, citizens, residents. Okay, very good. Any questions, discussion? Mr. Supervisor, yes, uh, a couple questions for Chief Pierce. How many of those do we have? We have seven 12 lead um, cardiac monitors and seven of the CPR devices, so 14 total. And uh, what is what do they cost when they are new? A brand new cardiac monitor is at least 40,000 and the CPR device is 20,000. And how old are they right now? I believe the cardiac monitors are approximately four years old, four to five years old, and the CPR devices are around three. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. I do have one question. What is the approximate life of uh, one of those? Depending upon um, the manufacturer, the last ones we had, we had for about 12 years and they no longer made any of the replacement parts. So we had to switch to a different unit. So as long as we're maintaining them every year, I'm hoping to get at least 10, 12 years out of them. Well, if you ever have to come to my house, bring me the newer one. Okay. Okay. No, but they all work, obviously. They all work. Okay. Great. Maintained yearly. Of course. Okay. Oh, by the way, I'm just kidding. So, everybody, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I should say that too. Okay. So, uh, does anybody have any questions or discussion? Okay. Let's go ahead and take a roll. Uh, yeah, roll call vote. All right. Uh, we, we need a motion. We need a motion. We need a motion. Oh, we'd like to make the motion. This is Casale. Yes, I move to concur with the recommendation of Fire Chief Frank Pierce and approve the purchase of an expert care extended warranty and preventative maintenance contract with Zoll Medical Corporation for our X-Series cardiac monitors for seven years and our Autopult CPR device for three years for a total of $83,964.65 to be paid as follows. May of 2021, $14,045.50, May of 22, $9,275, May of 2023, $19,548.83, May of 2024, $10,273.83, May of 2025, Ten thousand two hundred and seventy-three dollars and eighty-three cents. May of two thousand twenty-six, ten thousand two hundred seventy-three dollars and eighty-three cents. May of two thousand twenty-seven, ten thousand two hundred seventy-three dollars and eighty-three cents. Funds are to be taken from Fire Fund Line Item two zero six dash three four zero dash seven three zero dash three zero zero and amend the budget accordingly. Support. 
Motion made by, was that Mr. Carabelli? Yes? I supported it. Okay. And who, who made the motion? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Mrs. Uh, yeah, I was, you called me looking at my phone. Can't do that. Okay, a motion made by Mrs. Casale is supported by Mr. Carabelli. Um, any discussion? Any questions? Roll call vote, please. Lisa Casale? Yes. Jim Carabelli? Aye. Lucia DeSico? Yes. Stanley Grot? Yes. Rick Staphicus? Yes. John Vermeulen? Yes. Vince Viviano? Yes. Motion carries, Mr. Super. Okay, thank you. And just so everybody knows, I was not looking at my phone. I was just kind of fixing it, trying to get the sound off. It's a new phone. So I got. I think I've got the sound off. Anyway, that's what I was doing. Okay, item number five, sidewalk maintenance services. Oh, by the way, uh, Chief Pierce, thank you very much for everything that you do and uh, your entire department. We appreciate you very much. Well, thank you for supporting us. We really appreciate it. It means the world to us that you guys are backing us and ensuring that we can go out and help everybody. Thank you. And that three-year trend means a world to us, too. Thank you very much for watching those costs. Okay. Thanks. Okay, uh, next one is the sidewalk maintenance services. Our building director, Tim Wood, is with us tonight, recommending that the township extend its contract with the entity that provided services for our 2020 sidewalk maintenance program. And while the scope of this work is increasing, the contractor has agreed to keep the prices the same as last year. Uh, most of the estimated costs are home by the property owners in our township. Mr. Wood uh, estimates that township will pay approximately $15,000 and the property owners would cover the remaining $350,000 or so. Mr. Wood, do I have all that right? And you have anything to add? Uh, you uh, described it perfectly. I'd be glad to answer any questions the board may have. Yeah, Mr. Wood, I do have a couple of questions for you. Um, oh, by the way, Nick, did you say that uh, Mrs. Barry is actually here waiting? No, sir. Yes or no, I didn't hear you? No, she's not. Okay, uh, but Mr. Wood, now we're not putting this out to bid this year. And the reason we're not putting it out to bid is can you, uh, we're, we're guaranteed stable pricing, the same pricing as last year. Is, is that what it, it's about? Yes, uh, so uh, we had competitive bidding uh, last year, uh, pre-pandemic, and the current contractor, Luigi Fernandi and Sons, uh, was the winner of that project. Uh, they performed it for us last year satisfactorily, um, and we approached them about the possibility of extending 2020 prices into 2021 uh, understanding that there's been a lot of uh, price pressures in the construction industry with the pandemic and so forth. Uh, we thought that that would be a good idea. Good. Any questions? Discussion? Good job, Mr. Wood. I, we appreciate that. Who would like to make a motion? Uh, I will, Mr. Supervisor. Mr. Viviano? I concur with the recommendation of the township engineer and modify the current contract with Luigi Fernandi and Sun Cement Company, Inc. to apply to the sidewalk maintenance services in 2021. Such services shall be at the unit cost outline in the bid form for the 2020 sidewalk maintenance program. The total cost of the program is estimated at 368,000. The township portion is estimated at 15,000 and the remainder is to be paid reimbursed by the property owners. Funds to cover township costs will be taken from capital improvement fund, account line item 427-442-967-510. Who would like to second? Support. Motion made by Mr. Viviano, seconded by Mrs. Casale. Any discussion or questions for Mr. Wood? Okay, uh, we'll take a roll call vote, please. Evans Viviano? Yes. Lisa Casali? Yes. Lucia DeSico? Yes. Stanley Grot? Yes. Rick Staphicus? Yes. John Vermeulen? Yes. And Jim Carabelli? Aye. Motion carries, Mr. Supervisor.
Thank you very much. Okay, this last item, board, you may recall we discussed this proposed ordinance amendment last time we got together. Our sidewalk committee, as well as our building director, Mr. Tim Wood, are seeking revisions to the sidewalk ordinance that will, among other things, change the deferral process for installation of sidewalks. We are required by Michigan law to vote twice on amendments to our ordinances. Therefore, this matter is being discussed two weeks in a row. Anything to add to that, Mr. Wood? No, I'd okay. be glad to answer any questions. Okay, unless there are any questions or discussion, I'll take a motion. Mr. Supervisor. Mr. Mrs. Casale. I move to adopt and publish for the second time ordinance number 293, amending chapter 58, article nine and chapter 46, article one of the Charter Township of Shelby Code of Ordinances to revise the regulations regarding sidewalks within the township and to provide for a civil responsibility violation within the township, providing for re repealer sever severability penalties and effective date. Or Motion made by Mr. Casale, supported by Mr. Viviano. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please. Alisa Casale. Yes. Vince Viviano. Yes. Jim Carabelli. Aye. Lucia DeSico. Yes. Stanley Grot, yes. Rick Staphicus. Yes. And John Vermeulen. Yes. Motion carries, Mr. Supervisor. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll go to announcements. And I just want to start off by saying uh, Mr. Vermeulen took me on a tour of the library. Uh, it was fascinating. Uh, that is a big place. Uh, we also reviewed all the costs. And uh, they're almost at the 50% mark in terms of uh, expenditures. Uh, but they are pretty much right on budget. And I'm pretty happy about that. I know we all are, uh, especially with these pandemic challenges. You know, um, Mr. Vermeulen, I think you were telling me the reason we're on budget, they bought the materials when? Early on. Most of the materials were bought early on. There's been some other issues, but yeah, that's basically how it went. Okay, good. So uh, congratulations on keeping that under control. The library's coming along well. It will open sometime first quarter. Is that what I heard? First quarter in the winter of 2022. Okay, very good. So if you have any questions, uh, you can call Mr. Renewlin or uh, Ms. Katie Esther. She is uh, on top of things as well. We appreciate the great work there. Any other announcements or any announcements at all? Okay. Okay, well, next, um, it's now time for business from the floor. Do we have anybody on the floor that would like to speak? Uh, Mr. Uh, Nick Monsell? Uh, we've got to give them the opportunity. So for those of you that are left in the attendees list, if you would like to address the board, again, star nine raises your virtual hand, star nine to raise your hand. Okay, Mr. Chair, as you can see, nobody has raised their hand on that list. Okay, and uh, we probably had a communication problem. It's probably me, uh, but Ms. Sophie Berry, I'm gonna ask her to come back in a couple of weeks. And uh, we really do wanna give her a very special congratulations uh, on this 100th um, anniversary or, or birthday. Uh, 100 years young uh, is quite a feat. So anyway, I'm looking forward to that in a couple of weeks. Is there anything else uh, anybody would like to discuss before I ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I would make that motion to adjourn. Support. Okay, motion made by Mr. Viviano. And if I'm reading Groat's lips, he seconded it just now. So all those in favor, uh, please um, indicate by saying, as you roll say, call. Hi, Mr. Roll Carole. call, please. Roll call vote. Oh yeah, roll call vote, sorry, okay. Sorry. Mr. Viviano? Yes. Stanley Grod, yes. Uh, Rick Staphicus? Yes. John Vermeulen? Yes. Jim Carabelli? Aye. Lisa Castali? Yes. Lucia DeSico? Yes. We are adjourned, Mr. Supervisor. Good night, everybody. Good job, Nick Monticelli. Thank you again for hosting this, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, everybody. Have Thank a you. great night, everybody. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye -bye.
you know, 